These are the Lesson 26 activities for college algebra. For each rational function, we want to graph it, and we're going to fill in all these blanks here, state the domain, any holes, etc., etc. Okay, so f of x equals x plus 2 over x plus 2 times x plus 3. So the domain is all real numbers except for any x value that would make the denominator 0. So I have to leave out negative 2 and negative 3. So if I did this in um, interval notation, I would say negative infinity to negative 3, union negative 3 to negative 2, union negative 2 to infinity. Um, if I wanted to write it in set builder notation, I would say the set of all x's such that x does not equal negative 3 or negative 2. Okay, next step is to reduce and identify potential holes. So I have x plus 2 over x plus 2 times x plus 3, and my x plus 2's can cancel. So this would reduce to 1 over x plus 3. So potential holes are places where both the denominator and the numerator are zero, so the canceled factors. Um, so I have a potential hole at x equals negative 2. Okay, vertical asymptotes are zeros of the denominator of the reduced function. So I'm going to take this x plus 3 equal to 0, and I get x equals negative 3 is the location of my vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptotes um, look at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. Um, we might want to multiply these together to easily, more easily see the degree. This would be x plus 2 over x squared plus 5x plus 6. So the degree of the numerator is 1, the degree of the denominator is 2, the degree of the numerator is less than the denominator, so the horizontal asymptote is the x-axis, whose equation is y equals 0. Y-intercepts happen when we make x 0, so I get 2 over 6, or 1 third. I just made each of the x's 0, so 0 plus 2 is 2, and then 0 plus 2 times 0 plus 3, so 2 times 3 gives me the 6. Okay, x-intercepts happen when the function equals 0, which can only happen if the numerator equals 0. So x equals negative 2 is my x-intercept. Symmetry, I am going to plug um, negative x into my original function, and I'm checking to see do I get exactly f of x back, or do I get the opposite of f of x back? So plug in a negative x, f of negative x gives me negative x plus 2 over negative x squared plus 5 times negative x plus 6. And that simplifies to negative x plus 2 over x squared minus 5x plus 6. This is not exactly the same as my original function. It's also not exactly the opposite of my original function because I didn't change every single sign. So this is not, this has neither kind of symmetry. Okay, so now I'm going to plot all the things I know. I have um, vertical asymptote at negative 3. Horizontal asymptote at the y-axis, um, the x-axis, I'm sorry. And I have um, a y-intercept at one-third, like right there. And an x-intercept at negative two, right there. Except negative two, I just... Um, got concerned because that would be on my uh, on my horizontal asymptote. Um, and I, then I remembered, oh, I have a hole at negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to erase that one. Uh, 
and put a hole there at negative 2. Okay, finally, um, before I try to draw this, I need to find coordinates of at least one point between and beyond each x-intercept and vertical asymptote. Okay, so I need something over here to the left of this vertical asymptote. I think negative five is a good choice. Okay. I need something between this vertical asymptote and this x-intercept or pseudo x-intercept, it's a hole. So something between zero and one, so maybe a half. And then I need something after this, um, this y-intercept, maybe, maybe one or maybe two. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna have my calculator do these. The negative five gave me negative a half. A half gives me 0.29 about. And two gives me 0.2. So let's plot these points. Negative five, negative a half is about right here. And then a half, 0.29. That's hard to draw because it's almost touching that hole. A half, 0.29, there we go. And then 2.2. Now try to connect things as best I can. So this hole is on the x-axis and this point is above it. So this probably goes up towards the asymptote. I think I'm gonna draw it in another color. Okay, and then, you know what? I might do, might plot one more point between this x-intercept and this y-intercept. Maybe I'm gonna do um, negative one. and I get a half for negative one. So negative one, a half is a little tiny bit higher than the y-intercept of a third. Okay, now I'm gonna try to connect them. This goes up and comes back down like that. Number two, r of x equals x plus one over x times x plus four. So my domain is all real numbers except any that would make this denominator zero. So I can't have x be zero and I can't have x be negative four. So I'll say the set of all x's such that x does not equal zero or negative four. Um, Reduce, nothing reduces. There are no common factors on the top and the bottom, so we have no holes. Vertical asymptotes happen when the denominator is zero, so either when x equals zero or x plus four equals zero. So x equals zero or x equals negative four. Horizontal asymptotes um, depend on the relative size of the degrees of the numerator and denominator. If I multiply these together, my numerator is x plus one, and I'm gonna multiply the two factors of the denominator together and I get x squared plus four x. That means the degree of my numerator is one and the degree of my denominator is two. The degree of the numerator is smaller than that of the denominator, so my horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero, which is the x-axis. To find a y-intercept, you plug zero in for x, so we would have um, x plus one, where zero plus one over zero squared plus four times zero, which is one over zero, which is undefined. Okay, so we have no y-intercept. To find x-intercepts, we set the numerator equal to zero, and we get x equals negative one. And then to check for symmetry, you replace all your x's with negative x's. So r of negative x would be negative x plus one over negative x squared plus four times negative x, which is negative x plus one over x squared minus four x. This function is not exactly the same as the original. 
nor is it exactly the opposite of the original because I didn't change every single sign. So this has neither kind of symmetry. All right, let's draw all the things we know so far and then we will add some points um, as needed. So I have vertical asymptotes at x equals zero, that's the y-axis, and at x equals negative four, And I have a horizontal asymptote um, at y equals zero. And no y-intercept, but I have an x-intercept at negative one. Right there. Okay, so I wanna add points between and beyond any vertical asymptote and, and or x-intercept. So I think I'm going to add for x's, I'm working my way left to right, and I know nothing about what happens over here before the first vertical asymptote. So I'm going to add um, negative 5 or negative 10 or anything in between. Um, let's go with uh, negative 7. Next, I need a point um, after the first vertical asymptote, but before this x-intercept. So something between negative four and negative one, maybe negative three. Okay. Then I need something between the x-intercept and the next vertical asymptote. So something between negative one and zero, like negative a half. And finally, I need an x value after the last vertical asymptote. So something after x equals zero, maybe x equals Three. Okay, so I had a calculator calculate each of these for me. Um, I get negative 0.29, and then for negative 3, I have 0.67, negative a half, I have negative 0.29 again, and then 3, I get 0.19. Maybe we'll just call that 0.2. Okay, so I'm gonna plot these points. I have negative seven, negative 0.29. So just barely negative there. And then negative three, about two thirds, almost one. And then negative a half, negative 0.29. So barely negative. And then three, Point two, just barely positive. All right, so now I should be able to use those points that I just graphed and the asymptotes as guides to draw the rest of my graph. So let's start between the two asymptotes. I've got the x-intercept and then it has to connect, moving to the left, we have to connect to this next point. And I also know that this graph has to approach the vertical asymptote. And so I know it's going up, so I think it's gonna to continue to go up and approach that asymptote. Like that. And then moving to the right from this x-intercept, it has to go down to get to the next point. And then I also know that it has to continue that it has to approach this asymptote, so it's gonna to have to continue down and approach that asymptote. So it looks something like that. Okay, now to the right of the vertical asymptote at zero, um, I only have one point. I could get more if I wanted, but I do know that my graph has to approach the horizontal asymptote as I head out towards the right, and it has to approach the vertical asymptote without crossing the x-axis because I only have this one x-intercept. So it does, definitely does not go down like that or else it would cross the x-axis again. So the graph has to go up and approach the vertical asymptote and come down towards the horizontal asymptote to the right. Like that. And then I have a similar thing happens over here with this point. I know I can't cross the x-axis. Um, so in order to approach this vertical asymptote, we have to go down. We can't go up and approach it because otherwise, because we'd have to cross the x-axis and I only have this one x-intercept. So this has to go down, and I know that my end behavior to the left is to approach the horizontal asymptote, so it's gonna go up to the left and approach the x-axis, and down to the right and approach the vertical asymptote.
something like that. <laughs>